Alright mates, how's it going? In today's video, episode 13 of Day of the Dragon by Richard A. Nack. Let's go! Ronin stood at the bow of the airship, arms folded, staring at the two creatures piloting it. They were darting back and forth, adjusting gauges and muttering to themselves, and the wizard couldn't help but wonder how such an insane race could have possibly built this wondrous piece of technology. And even if they did build it, he wasn't entirely sure that they knew how to pilot it. But there wasn't much the wizard could do about it, so he leaned over a rail and allowed his mind to wander. And as usual, his thoughts turned to Verisa. If she lived, she was definitely on his trail, but there was no way she'd know about the Zeppelin. No, the likelihood was that she'd end up wandering Kazmadan, or even worse, head straight for Grimbatol and get herself killed. Ronin's thoughts then turned to guilt for Duncan and Moloch and all the other men that had died during his previous mission. Human. There was a glance to see one of the goblins, called Nullin, now standing behind him. What? Time to prepare to disembark. We're here? I don't see anything. The other goblin, Void, then approached. This is the place. And it's the truly Master Wizard. It's the clouds, Master Wizard. They obscure things to your human eyes. But we goblins have much sharper vision. Below us is a very soft, very safe ledge. Climb down the ladder and we'll drop you off. You'll see. Rodney wasn't exactly convinced. He definitely wanted off this vessel, but he wasn't just going to take their word for it. However, as if it had a mind of its own, the wizard's left hand reached out, grasped Nullin by the throat, and squeezed. And a voice that was not his own then came out of his mouth. I said no tricks were to be played. No acts of treachery, worm. Only a game. Only a game. Game? You like games? I have a game for you to play. Ronin now found himself dragging the poor goblin towards the edge of the ship, and although he had no love for the goblin, he didn't want its blood on his hands. Deathwing, don't do this. Would you rather they led you into their little ploy, human? The drop would not have been at all pleasant for one who cannot fly. I'm not a fool. I had no intention of climbing down the ladder. Not on a goblin's word. You wouldn't have bothered saving me in the first place if you'd thought me that adult. Are we good? You'll drop me off in a proper place, right? One of which Deathwing and I would approve? Yes, yes, no tricks. I promise. You see, no need to drop him off in the side. Ronin's possessed hand then abruptly released the goblin's throat and the creature hit the deck. Your choice, wizard. Ronin then sighed in relief and glanced towards the other goblin, Void, who stood cowering. Well, get us to the mountain. A short while later, the Zeppelin now hovered above the very cave mouth that Deathwing had shown Ronin in that vision. And Ronin was very eager to descend the rope ladder and get the hell away from these goblins. So he moved towards it. However, the ladder was clattering about all over the place. Can you keep us steady? The goblins nodded, still very much scared shitless. But despite Void and Nullin trying their utmost to keep the Zeppelin as steady as they could, the harsh mountain winds made the ladder extremely wobbly. And the wizard, after bashing against the side of the Zeppelin and almost losing his footing several times, decided it would probably be better to risk jumping. So he took another deep breath studied the distance between himself and the ledge, threw himself towards it, and landed with a painful grunt. It didn't take long at all for the goblins in their vessel to start pulling away. They were obviously quite happy to be done with the wizard just as much as he was with them. But, without control or warning, Ronin's hand suddenly shot up, with his index finger pointing directly towards the vessel. No! However, Deathwing went ahead and ignored Ronin, and used the possessed wizard's body and magic to shoot a stream of pure fire at the fleeing zeppelin, and it exploded. You shouldn't have done that! The winds will keep the explosion from being heard, and the debris will fall to a deep valley little used. You need not fear discovery, my friend. That's not what I was- You would do yourself better to continue on into the cave. The elements outside are hardly fit for you. Ronin knew the dragon didn't care about his well-being, but it was pointless arguing, so he obeyed and made his way into the cave mouth, and as soon as he did, he immediately heard the sound of dragons, and orcs, a whole lot of them. He's strong, stronger than I imagined. The wizard was showing much more defiance than Deathwing had assumed possible. He had a strong will, that one, which was why Deathwing was quite glad that Ronin would most likely perish in the course of matters. Strong will breeds strong wizards, like Medivh, and the last thing Deathwing needed was another bloody Medivh. But enough of that, Deathwing, or rather Lord Prester, then made his way to Lordaeron Palace, 
and entered into the front hall. One of the servants noted his arrival and went off to inform the king and shortly thereafter reappeared, inviting the young noble to another room to await the king's arrival. But as Deathwing entered the new room, he quickly discovered he wasn't waiting alone. Our greetings, Lord Prester. My greetings to you, sir and madam. We'd hoped to meet you sooner than this, my lord. Your reputation spread throughout the kingdoms of the Alliance, especially in Dalaran. The reputation of the Kirin Tor is known to all as well. More and more so each day, but not in the way we wish. Deathwing noted the tone of Madeira's voice. I had expected to meet his majesty here alone. Has Dalaran some business with Waldron? Dalaran seeks to keep abreast of situations important to the Alliance. Something a bit more difficult of late, due to our not being notified about major summits between members. Yes, well, I did urge His Majesty to allow you to join the deliberations over Alterac, but he seemed adamant about leaving you out of them. Did he now? We know the outcome regardless. Congratulations are in order for you, Lord Preston. It came as a surprise to me, I must tell you. All I ever wanted was to keep the Alliance from falling apart, after Lord Perinald's unfortunate behaviour. Yes, a terrible thing. One would have never thought it of the man. I knew him when he was younger. A bit timid, but he certainly didn't seem like the traitorous type. Your former homeland's not too distant from Alterec, is it not, Lord Prester? For the first time during this conversation, Deathwing felt a twinge of annoyance. This game no longer pleased him. but. Before he could answer the question, King Terranus entered the room, followed closely by a toddler that's apparently Arthas, but I don't quite understand how that's possible considering Arthas was nine at the start of the second war, so I'm just going to ignore that cameo. Instead, King Terranus looked towards the two from the Kirin Tor and angrily blurted out, I already told the Major Domo that I've no time for you today. If Deloran has any claims or protests to make, they can send a formal writ through the proper channels. Now good day. Well then we'll be going. Your Majesty, but we've been empowered to tell you that the Council hopes you'll soon see reason on this matter. Dalaran has always been a steadfast, loyal ally, when it chooses to be. Both wizards ignored the King's snide comment. Lord Prester, it's been an honour to meet you face to face at last. I trust it will not be the final time. We shall see. And with that, both wizards buggered off. My most humble apologies for that scene, Prester. The very nerve of them. They barge into my palace as if Dalaran and not Lordaeron rule here. This time they go too far- However, the king froze mid-sentence as Deathwing raised a hand. He didn't really care what Terranus had to say at the moment. He was more interested in what the two mages were now discussing. So he went ahead and did some kind of eavesdropping spell or something. He's a blank. I couldn't sense a thing about him, Madeira. Perhaps you're still not fully recovered, Drendin. After all, the shock you- I'm over it. It will take more than that to kill me. What about you? Did you sense anything? No. He's powerful. Possibly as powerful as Medivh. He must be using some talisman or something. No one's that powerful. Not even Krasus. Do we really know how powerful Krasus is? He's older than the rest of us. That surely means something. Deathwing now found his curiosity well and truly piqued. What is Krasus doing anyway? Why is he keeping so secret? He says he wants to find out about Prester's past. But I think there's more. There's always more with him. Deathwing cancelled out his eavesdropping spell. He'd heard enough. He then snapped his fingers, allowing Terranus to unfreeze and finish his boring story. Far and I won't stand for it. I have a mind to cut off all diplomatic relations with them immediately. Yes, probably a wise move. But draw it out, your majesty. Allow them to lodge their protest first. Then begin closing the gates on them. You're a very patient young man, Prester. I appreciate you allowing me to vent. Now let's get down to the matter at hand, shall we? We've more than two years before the wedding can take place, but it will require extensive planning. I understand completely, your majesty. The king then explained all the various functions his future son-in-law would need to attend to over the coming months. It was important for him to be present at each and every upcoming occasion, alongside Kalia, so that the people could see them together and get used to it and stuff. However, as the king continued to babble, Deathwing's attention drifted. Krasis. Who was that then? Was that the individual that had triggered the endless hunger? How very interesting. 